had this dream as a boy of sailing a boat around the world. I did not see the racial implications of being black, wanting to break into a sport which is predominantly a white man, a rich man's game. Being black in South Africa during the apartheid era was a frightening period. But I wanted to sell so badly, I would not take a no. So I knew I had to go and design my own boat. I had to build my own boat. People looked at my boat and said, that thing will never cross an ocean. I was approaching hurricane strength winds. I would hold my breath and sometimes I couldn't hold my breath long enough. I fought to the very, very end. Two days later, I saw Cape Horn. I could not believe that I had actually just achieved it. I had just sailed around the world. I was a child with a dream. I was a boy who tried the dream. I have now become a man who has succeeded at the dream and you are part of my success. I want to say thank you very much. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I encountered major fog. And in this major fog, it became harder and harder. And in the middle of this fog, I get hit by a Russian freighter. Here I am with a huge hole in my boat. U.S. Coast Guard says, abandon the boat. I could not abandon the boat. I had no insurance. Everything I owned was on this boat. And so instead, I got this pump. And I chose to fit this pump into the front of my boat. And every hour, I would go to the front of my boat, and I started to pump. I would pump hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gallons of water out of my boat. Did I trim my sails and point towards the nearest land, but does the water stop coming in? No. And so I'd go back and pump again. I'd pump for 15 to 20 minutes. Go and fix the meal, come back and pump. I did this 15 to 20 minutes every day, 24 times a day. I did this for 15 days. How I like to do this for 15 days? Is this not hard work? Yes, it's hard work, but hard work does pay off. I ended up finishing third in my class. AT&T, when you went through the merger of the two cultures between yourselves and Singular, you had a difficult and a rough period trying to bring these two very dissimilar cultures and dissimilar viewpoints and different models. There was 18 months that you spent and you pumped. And now look at how you survived that transition as you now go forward and impact the lives of others. We must always do what it takes to get that job done. You see, I bought a sextant. This is the same thing that people like Ernest Shackleton and Magellan had used to find their way across the oceans over the last five, six hundred years. And I ended up buying a book called Celestial Navigation for Yachtsmen. Now, don't ask me where I was for the first seven to ten days. I was lost. I was busy reading this book, trying to figure out how to use this device. Idana reality. We all have questions. Things will always change. You want to know what's going on in this market. Well, we can look at all the numbers and we can look at all the noise. But we must look internally into ourselves. We must look and say, where do we want to be positioned? We know where we are today. We know where we want to get to be tomorrow. How shall we navigate our ways through all kinds of conditions, the good and the bad, the headwinds and the following winds, the big seas and the calm seas? We will decide for ourselves, not by the market, but by what is driven within ourselves to get there. But life, life always... Life always has a way of challenging and testing us. When we think we're going down a certain road, it likes to try and change the road. And so here I am at sea for 35 days. I've not spoken to a human being, feeling awfully lonely out there. So I stood tall to look for a ship that I could talk to. When the boom, which carries the mainsail, came flopping across the boat like a golf club going at a golf ball. My forehead was the golf ball. It made perfect contact with my forehead. It split open my eyebrow. I could see the bone of my eyebrow. I had a big barrier. You see, I did not have the money for satellite distress system. I could not flip a switch to say this boat in this location is in trouble. I could not just get onto the satellite telephone and phone a doctor and say, help, what do I do? The nearest island, the nearest doctor, was 800 miles away. So here I am in the middle of the ocean. And so much has changed. 
and I am battling for my life. If I don't stop the bleeding, I shall die. So I got a sailing needle. Yes, a sailing needle and sailing twine. Could you stitch your forehead back together with this needle and sailing twine? Could you? Nope, nor could I. <laughs> so we had a barrier, a huge barrier. And then I started remembering in science. If you have a bleeding wound and you apply pressure to the wound, the bleeding will stop. I remember my mother being my science teacher saying that if you hold that wound together for long enough, it shall congeal and, the, and eventually grow back together again. So I started thinking, hold it together? Apply pressure and hold it together? Aha! Apply pressure and hold it together? And with that, I came up with my solution. <laughs> a clothes peg, as we call it in South Africa, or a clothes pin, as we call it in America. I sailed 800 miles like this to go and see the doctor. The doctor looked at the wound and said, son, the wound is fine, but you need psychiatry help. <laughs> you die in a reality. What do you have as your symbols that reminds you of how far you have come? You have lived through the biggest bull market, and now you are living in a period of a down market. We must find the symbols that give us inspiration to get up each and every day to keep going. We must follow those passions. For many of you, you love this business. This is your entire life. For some, it's just a job. If you don't have passion, go and do something else. But when you have passion for this industry, when you have passion for helping people, give your best. Be willing to commit the hard work because hard work is all we can bring to the table to make a difference. What is next? Cisco, I challenge you to ask yourself that question. Now what? You've had 22% year-over-year growth. What are you now going to do? How are you going to go to the next level? What is the next level? Now, what is next for you? Yes, it's our time. So we build upon our successes. Life is about change and how we deal with those changes. We get to decide, will we carry baggage or will we carry treasures? The choice of these things are totally up to each and every one of us. Because I truly believe that in life there are no barriers, there are only solutions. And now it is our time. Thank you so much. You die in a reality. IBM, AT&T, what is next? Cisco, I challenge you to ask yourself that question as you now go forward and impact the lives of others.